have it or you get weary, I will, I will shut down here. Amen. Do I have a time? Tell me, friend. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, glory to God. We'll try not to be lengthy. You know, it's, t- it's tough when you're between the roast. Amen. But if the Holy Ghost gets in it, we'll be okay. What do you say? Amen. If not, I'll be toast. That's right. Hallelujah. But we want the Lord to help us. Good to see Brother David and his family. Amen. Welcome to Louisiana. And we're glad to see them today. Second Samuel chapter 23. And I've just got two verses that I want to read. And these have been on my heart. Uh, and I've preached them at the church. And uh, felt like preaching today. And maybe one other time. Well, I'll probably, I just, this, this character really, really, amen, just got, got I, he got a hold of me the other day. Heard his name in a song. Someone had sent us a CD, holding us uh, the Blythes. And uh, Sister Diane Blythe had wrote this song. And, uh, and she had Shama in it. And I'm telling you, I, I, just one little line of that song inspired me to go to the book. Praise God. Verse number 11. After him was Shama, the son of Agai, the Harite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. That's how, like, that's how the enemy likes to run. He likes to run in a troop. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils or beans or barley or wheat. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. And slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. But he stood in the midst of the ground, and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Praise God. May the Lord bless the reading of the word, anoint the preaching here this morning. Praise God. We, we have here a man whom God has made a memorial of his deed. God, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, a man has, has given this man a tribute in the Scripture. He is, a, he is one of David's mighty men. Uh-huh. And I want to tell you, I, I, I get inspired when I read about David and his mighty men. And that how David was made a captain over them. And no doubt David had great influence on the deeds that many of these men did. <clears throat> but I think that if God took time enough to put this down in Scripture, I feel like that God would like us to take a look at this man. And if we possibly could, we could duplicate or even emulate what this man had done. I read to you that he stood. That means this man stood and he defended, amen, what was his. Not only did, amen, in standing, that shows me that he was defying the enemy. And not only did he defy the enemy, but he defended what was his. And not only did he defend what was his, he defeated the adversary that came to his arena. Are you hearing me? Now, if I was an illiterate, uh, 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 I'm, I'm probably more a, an illiterate preacher than a preacher that alliterates. But if I was, those would be my three points. Praise God. Hey, Amen. He defied and he defended and he defeated. But any way you want to make mention of it today, Today, I believe that this man Shama was a mighty man. The Bible said the people fled, but he stood. That one word, but there, it means something to me. While everybody else was fleeing, while everybody else was running, the contrast is drawn to this one man named Shama who was standing in the mist and he was defending his little bean patch. Amen. Are you hearing me? Well, I, I had this message when I came. 
And this morning when I got up and went to Dollar General, and any time you go to a meeting, you've almost got to show up at Dollar General or Walmart because someone has forgot something. And this time it wasn't some timers. I don't have all timers. I've just got some timers. Praise God. But I got up and made my way down to, to Dollar General. And I don't know the name of that street out there. But while I was traveling, I was thinking about Amen Shama. I felt the Spirit of the Lord say to me, Amen, He stood in the midst of the ground. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said, He stood in the midst of the ground. The ground was in him and he was in the ground. He said Shammah was grounded. He been come on now. And I felt like the Spirit of the Lord told me there's a difference in just standing and there's a difference in being grounded. Paul said, amen, that ye continue in the Word. Amen, that ye being grounded and settled that ye be not moved away from the gospel of hope uh, that was preached unto you. Uh, if I could preach to you a few moments this morning, I'd like to preach about surrounded, but I'm grounded. Uh, amen. Surrounded, but I'm grounded. Uh, I know you know like me, uh, we are living in a day that we are surrounded by the adversary. We are surrounded by the world. Uh, we are surrounded by the flesh. Uh, we are surrounded by the devil. We are surrounded by scoffers. We are surrounded by mockers. Amen. But thank God we are grounded and we're not going to be moved. We are not going to be drawn away. Amen. Oh, I wish I could preach to you. He stood. I want to tell you, I believe that Shammah was akin to Nehemiah. Nehemiah said there in that sixth chapter, in the eleventh verse, Brother Stacy, he said, should such a man as I flee. They were trying to pressure him out. They were trying to intimidate him. Sanballat and Tobiah. And he said, should such a man as I flee. I believe I believe that's where him and Shammah, amen, are the same. Because Shammah and Nehemiah were saying this, I may be shot, but God helping me, I'm not going to be shot in the back. Everybody else may be running. Everybody else may be compromising. Amen. Everybody else may be throwing in the towel. But I'm going to stand. And having done all to stand, I'm going to stand there for when everybody else is running I'm going to be rooted and I am going to be grounded oh hallelujah you know we're living in a day that people are running from the conflict when I look you know I got I got seven of my favorite singers here today no All right, I probably killed it. You know, you ain't supposed to say that to the pastor. He ain't supposed to ask you questions. You ask no questions, you tell no lies. Huh? Praise God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Sister Sonia and Sister Bethany and Sister Keisha. And then my four girls, you know, they're, they got to be up there on that list. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Barry. But I want to tell you something. Amen. We are living in a day when people are running from the conflict. And when I, and I said that to say this, when I look at Sister Boyd and Sister Holden and, and Brother Stacy, and I've said it before in your hearing, and I realize where are those that they, they shouted around the altars with. Amen. Amen. Spoke in tongues with. When I see where many of them are today. Amen. I always take heart. Amen. That even though in a youth group that was running. Amen. That maybe their, their convictions were nothing more than opinions. And opinions can change overnight. You can throw your opinion under, over the bus. Or under the bus. Or over the bus. Amen. 
but I want to tell you right now, when you get a conviction, it'll stand you up in the midst of the battle. It'll square your shoulders back like a brother Philip Snow that'll say, Mama, we're not coming over. Amen. Because I've got a bean patch. Amen. Or I got some snowflakes and we ain't about Amen. To compromise. Amen. Oh, I feel like preaching. I read the story of a man by the name of Thomas Jackson. Thomas Jackson served in the Civil War. Thomas Jackson was a great military strategist. He pumped it into his men discipline. He did not play. And in one particular battle, General Brigier, he man, the last name of B, Junior, he then he looked over. His men were a little skittish. They were a little bit afraid. They were being overrun. They were surrounded, if you will. Hey, but he looked over and he said, I see. He said, look there, men. Look at Jackson. He is standing like a stone wall. Amen. If we determine to die, we will conquer. Amen. What Jackson, we know him as Stonewall Jackson, had taught his men. This is a cause that we believe in. This is a cause in which we're going to stake our lives in. And no matter what, if we're surrounded, we are going to be grounded. They say in one battle, a cannonball rolled right between General Jackson's horse's legs. Amen. Without. Amen. Going off for some reason. He looked over at one of his men and he said, I believe the enemy is in range. Come on now. What he was saying, I'm not backing up. I'm not shutting up. I'm not giving up. I'm not letting up. I'm going to stand. And having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. Therefore, Oh, glory be to God. Are you ready to stand? I come to preach to our little fellowship. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm hanging my hat with you, Brother Gotro. I'm glad I'm hanging my hat with you, Brother Snow. Amen, Brother Holden, Brother Maxson, Jr. Amen, Brother Ray here, and Brother Brewer and his church, and Brother Shootcraft. I want to tell you, but I know, amen, we may be few in number, but we got to be like Nehemiah. We got to be like Shammah. We got to be like Stonewall Jackson. You may shoot me, but you're not shooting me in the back. I come to stand toe to toe with you. I come not to run. I come to fight. I come to fight for my family. I come to fight for my church. I come to fight for my conviction. Woo! Lift your hands. Say, I come to fight. I didn't come to run. I come to be grounded. We may be surrounded. Religious personalities get up and make fun of us. Preachers that are rock stars. I know one, know his father and his brother well. And I heard him with my own ears mock. He meant his raising of his holiness grandfather. Come on, he lingered around a little too late. He meant he's had to pick up a lot of broken pieces, and I don't say that joyfully, but I'm telling you, they make fun of us. You've got the intelligentsia that are preaching on the airwaves. He meant that it's all about knowledge, nothing about the spirit. He meant we're being attacked on every side. Denominations mock. He meant their meager beginnings. I want to tell you the church of God and the assembly of God and Every other Pentecostal denomination, there was a time that they believed in holiness. There was a time they stood up for their bean patch, but they're not doing it anymore. 
are. Amen, brother. They'll make fun of people that are living holy. Ladies looking like ladies. Amen. Coming to church and the Avon lady hasn't blown up in their face. Amen. Coming to church and they're dressed modest. Are you hearing me? And they mock it. And they make fun of it. And they say that stuff don't amount to a hill of beans. Well, it may not amount to a hill of beans to them. But I've spent 24 years. I've labored. I've plowed. I've planted. I've watered. And it means more than a hill of beans. It's my conviction. And I'm going to stand for it. Maybe I need to quit right here while, while I'm ahead. I won't tell you this is our fellowship. We may be surrounded. Let's set up a beachhead in Pine Prairie. Let's set up a beachhead in Falk, Arkansas. Let's set up a beachhead in Shreveport, Louisiana. Let's set up a beachhead in Sterlington, Louisiana. I don't know about y'all, but I'm being surrounded. Amen. And I'm fighting the devil like never before in my little church. Are you hearing me? Amen. But I made up my mind. I'm not moving. They may shoot me, but they ain't shooting me in the back. Amen. Come on now. I've done nailed my colors to the mat. And come hell or high water Live or die, sink or swim I'm going to stand I'm going to fight I'm going to preach I'm going to worship I'm going to do what I've always done You know We're surrounded You know that And I'm telling you It was a dark and disastrous day In which Shammah lived and Shama lived. Amen. But God was looking for one whole hearted man. Well, I need to quit. I feel like I need to quit. I feel like I need to preach on. But I think if I quit right now, I may he may be better because you're hungry. Huh? But I'd like to preach to you. Amen. Because you know what? We need to be encouraged that we need to stand. Hey man, come on now. I've spent more than one Sunday evening in my office with my head in my hands. Hey man, hey man, wringing my hands, if you will. Hey man, come on now. Fighting the devil. Hey man, come on now. Sometimes I don't even feel like getting back up, brother Juno, in the pulpit. Hey man, I'd rather just sit there. Hey man, but something within me says, hey, hey man, that's my bean patch. Hey man, come on now. And are they worth fighting? for you. Oh yes! They're worth fighting for. Amen. They may be nothing but a hill of beans. Amen. To the world. But they're my bean patch. They're trophies of God's grace. And they're worth fighting for. We live in a day when people are running. When they run, they mock people that backslide. You hearing me? Amen. And all of a sudden, after they backslide, they become spiritual. Start quoting scriptures and everything. My dear Lord, just stick a sock in your mouth. Amen. Oh, but they go go out there. I've never felt freer than I'm feeling right now. I've never felt more of God than I'm feeling right now. Just hide and watch. I've watched them go on down the road and there's a train wreck. After a while, it may be the children. Most of the time, it is. Oh, I, I feel like preaching to you. Hey, but come on, somebody. They make fun of us. They say, oh, it's silly. It's old-fashioned. It's out of date. It's not going to work in this hour because the church has bought that that market marketing scheme, hook, line, and sinker, where we think, amen, if we can't preach the Bible, let's just start building bowling alleys and and skating rinks and, amen, coffee shops and gift shops in our churches. Uh, How in the world can we compete with something like that? Uh, I don't know about you. I don't have the money to do it, but I want to tell you I've got something. Amen. Silver and gold have I none, uh, but such as I have, uh, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Do you have anything to give this morning? Hallelujah. 
Woo. This hour of stampede and rout. God is looking for one man. He is looking for one woman. He is looking for one church to stop running, to stop flying. One soul to cease from, thank you brother, from fleeing in panic, in fear, in unbelief. Even in then and there when he finds that man, he finds that woman, he finds that church. Then, then and there the battle will be turned. The opportunity and the occasion was thrust upon this man Shama. He didn't go out looking for it, but suddenly and unexpectedly, hey, then all of a sudden here came the Philistines again I want to tell you this hour in which we live that is dark and disastrous and dangerous Amen. we didn't go out looking for it it was thrust upon us but we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this and as that general said about Jackson if we determine to die we will conquer church are you ready to die are you ready to die to the flesh are you ready to die to carnality? Are you ready to be crucified with Christ? Yet not I, but Christ. He's going to live in me. And when He lives in me, I'll be His hands. I'll be His eyes. I'll be His mouth. I'll be His body. Surrounded, but I'm grounded. I'm grounded in what God put burned in my heart. I come out of a worldly church. I know you all know that in California. Are you hearing me? I went to export, didn't know anybody in Pennsylvania. Went across the country. I didn't go home for, for Thanksgiving. I didn't go home for Christmas. And I didn't go home for spring break. The first time I ever went home on a holiday was my senior year at Christmas time. Amen. But I went there and I found me a trail and I can take you to the place, hallelujah, where I walked. And when I was there during that school year, there was a path that was beaten. Amen. Come on now. And it was there I said, Lord, Amen. What is right? I had heard Brother Don Rich preach. Amen. Got saved in his revival. Amen. He was about 55 years old then. And man, he can still preach. But I'm telling you, when he was in his 50s, you talk about a preacher. He had preached holiness to me. When your desire becomes greater than your hindrances, two gods in one house, they're not going to work. You're living too close to the fire. I grabbed everything in I could in that revival while the deacon sat and looked mad and he then got angry and they called him everything but a white man. Praise God. But I want to tell you right now. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. I got there at export. And I said, Lord, amen, show me. And he burned convictions into my life. And by the help of God, I'm still trying to live them today. Are you hearing me? Amen. What am I trying to tell you? I didn't get it from a preacher. I didn't get it from mom and daddy. I got it from the word. I got it from the Holy Holy Ghost, and in the midst of the battle, it's going to stand me up. I didn't come to run. I didn't come to give in. I come to lift up the bloodstained banner of holiness. But I'm telling you, I'm, I, I'm trying to bring it to a close, Brother Barry. I got more. God, give me wisdom. We're living in a day that's disastrous. It's dark. It's dangerous. And we come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And like Esther, we must say, if I perish, I perish. Like General B, if we determine to die here, we're going to 
conquer. Are you hearing me? Oh, I feel like preaching to you. Amen. I'm telling you, we live in a day when we're under the power of the Philistines. Israel was disorganized and scattered, but the Philistines were strong and triumphant. Israel was dispirited, weak and helpless. The Philistines were strong and victorious and insulting. That's always been the devil's plan. He likes to rout us and then ruin us. Israel would sow and the Philistines would plunder. Amen. The Philistines would shout and the people would run. The Philistines would appear and Israel was disappeared. I want to tell you that seems that's where our churches are today. People come in their long faced. The spirit of defeatism is on the shoulders of so many children of God. The world's laughed at us. We've had scandal after scandal. Wreck upon wreck. Amen. Ruin upon ruin. Amen. But I want to tell you what this world's needing. Amen. As a church in the midst of scandal, in the midst of ruin, in the midst of wreck, they need a shammer who's going to stand flat footed, square his shoulders back. Amen. And say, you know what? I planted this, these beans. I plowed, I planted, I've watered, and I'm sick and tired of the Philistines coming and taking my harvest. Oh, hallelujah. Are you hearing me? I want to tell somebody today, you planted, you harvest. Every time you go out to get the harvest, here comes the Philistines. But God's looking for a shammer who said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of the devil backing me in a corner. I'm sick and tired of the devil taking my milk money. I'm getting ready to stand. I'm getting ready to stand. I'm getting ready to stand. And having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. He got tired of sowing in the spring and getting plundered in the fall. He got to the place where death was preferable <laughs> to all this running, running, running. Got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I wish somebody would get sick and tired of being sick and tired of going to church and having dead meetings. Going to church, having barren altar calls. And that ain't been going on around here. Hallelujah, thank God. But I've been through a few dead services. Some of them I've been a part of. I couldn't figure out if I was really flopping as bad as I thought. Or if I was like a fish out of the water and was just out of my element. Huh? I'll leave that up to the Lord. Just do the best you can. But oh, I think it's time somebody needs to stand up and say, this is my bean patch. You may say it's a hill of beans, but this is my bean patch. Everybody may be cutting their hair, but I ain't cutting my hair. Amen. Everybody may be going to the movies, but I'm not going to the movies. Everybody may be going to Tiger Stadium, but I'm not going to Tiger Stadium. Amen. I'm going to stand. And having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. Therefore, oh, hallelujah, I feel, I feel like preaching. I know I need to shut up, but do I have anybody with me? Amen. You can tell the devil this morning, I may be shot, but he's not going to shoot me in the back. I'm going to stand toe to toe with him. I'm going to look eye to eye with him. I'm going to let the devil know you can't have my children. You can't have my testimony. You can't have my worship. You can't have my praise. Oh. Woo. Two more illustrations and I'm done. I got, I got a lot more, brother. So you're my witness. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm skipping a little bit here. No, it's better to have more than not enough. Huh? How many has ever heard of the Alamo? The Alamo in San Antonio. Hallelujah. You been there? I haven't been there. I'd like to go. Hallelujah. Oh, I read something about the Alamo. You know how the Americans had moved into Texas. 
Texans wasn't a part of the United States. The Mexicans started re reneging. Santa Ana began to become a dictator and began to take the rights away from the people. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. Does it sound familiar? Yes, Amen. You say, oh, what, what, what are you talking about? Get your head out of the sand. Uh, come on here. Amen. I'm going to try to be as nice as I can. Hallelujah. They got to fighting. They got to crying for help. We want our freedoms back. They're taking our freedom from us. And there was a man by the name of Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett's that famous frontiersman. He lived in Tennessee. And Davy Crockett, when he heard that Texas wanted to be free, Davy Crockett was willing to fight anywhere for a people who wanted to be free. And when he left Tennessee, Brother David Webb, he had no, he had an idea he might never return. So he penned this farewell poem. Davy Crockett said this, the home I forsook where my offspring arose, the graves I forsook where my children repose, the home I redeemed from the savage and wild, the home I have loved as father his child, the corn that I planted, the fields that I've cleared, the flocks that I raised, and the cabin I reared, the wife of my bosom, farewell to ye all, in the land of the stranger, I rise or I fall. Amen. What was Davy Crockett saying? He said, honey, I'm going down to Texas. Amen. Liberty means enough to me. I may never come home, but if they shoot me, they're not going to shoot me in the back. Amen. They're going to shoot me firing. They're going to shoot me fighting. I know that Davy Crockett went down in the Alamo, but that's not the end of the story. A few days later, when Sam Houston and his men, they said, remember the Alamo. And here they came, and the enemy was routed. I say, dear God, give us a church that one more time, I say, remember Calvary. Remember the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Remember holiness living. We had not come to run. We've come to stand. There's enough people running. There's a backslid preacher out of my wife's home church that's pastoring 45 minutes from me. I said, well, you should say something like that. If he gets close enough to me, I'm going to tell him. I don't even have a, a camcorder recording of my wedding because he was against it. Are y'all looking at me now? Huh? But it was his opinion. Because now, you know, I never did believe that anyway. You know, when they tell me that, I'm thinking, you are either lying to me now or you were lying when you were preaching it to me. One or the other. And I need an apology. Oh, come on. I know it's quiet. Amen. But I won't tell you tonight. Amen. I come to stand. I come to fight. Amen. That one, one this preacher, and I hope I don't offend anybody by saying that. He come into Sterlington, stopped some of the girls in my church and said, he said, we thought it was a, they said, he said, where you go to church? They said, Brother Tracy Boyds. He said, well, we thought it was about time that a, that a real Pentecostal preacher come to town. Amen. I think, I thought, okay. Amen. Maybe, maybe he is and I ain't. Amen. Come on. He come in there. So he, he went proselyting through town. He found my members and gave them packages. Uh, amen. How they needed to be saved. Uh, so I got on the phone and I called him up and I said, Brother Brown, this is, uh, or I said, I said, Billy. He said, Brother. I said, Whatever, Billy. Huh? To the forward, you got to show yourself forward. And I got, I got, I got up there and I said, uh, you know, whatever. I said, but I come, come to tell you, there are plenty of lost people in here. 
There's drunks, there's drug addicts, and you're welcome to win the loss, but you need to stay away from my people. Well, he went to shooting at me. Hey, Amen. Come on. He said, he that hath friends must show himself friendly. I said, I didn't call to be your friend. I called to confront you and tell you, amen, to leave my sheep alone. Or what I was saying, it's my bean patch and you get your hands off of it. Oh, I wish somebody would help me. Hey, amen. You know what? He's never bothered my people again. He did leave me a call the other day. Said, Brother Boyd, I just wanted you to leave you my number. 665-1111. Hey, amen. For a minute, I thought about changing mine to 3333. Amen. But we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God that's manifested in three parts. How in God's heaven did I get off on that? Woo! Where was I at before I started that? I have no idea. You got some timers too. Amen. But oh, I'm not ready to be through. I'm telling you, that preacher, they're backslid. They're mocking it. They're saying it's a hill of beans. But I'm telling you, brother, it's not a hill of beans to me, brother David Webb. Hey, man, come on. Paul said, I am set for the defense of the gospel. He said in Galatians, stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Hey, man, and, hey, man, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Come on, Shay, I'm done. I got more, but I'm, I'm close. Brother Jerry Pascarella told this illustration at youth camp. Some of you were there. I love it. Fits in right now. Hallelujah. It's a good thing about having a friend like him when you can't find an illustration. If you've got one that can, it's pretty good. Amen. Some of you heard it. He talked about that British soldier that uh, come in with a peg leg to that recruiter. And he said, sir, he said, I'm here to join the British Army. And the re recruiter said, sir... He, the young recruiter said, I don't really understand. He been why you would want to get in the army. How in the world can you run when the bombs are bursting? And how in the world can you run if the bell bullets are whizzing? He been, he said, you must not understand, sir. He said, he been, Britain doesn't need a soldier that knows how to run. He said, Britain needs a soldier that knows how to stand. He been, come on now. I'm telling you, the church don't need, he been, somebody that knows how to run. It Unless you're running from youthful lust, uh, unless you're running from sin, uh, unless you're running from temptation, you know what I'm talking about. But when it comes down to your convictions, are you willing to die for it? Are you willing to stand up and be counted for? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. But... But, but he stood. Not everyone's backsliding. Not everyone's compromising. Not everyone's running. Amen. Not everyone's, amen, lost their shout. There's still some people that are standing. They may be surrounded, but they are grounded this morning. Hallelujah. Hit me, G. I need a drummer. I'm going to sing my song. I can without my voice. Hallelujah. You know, if I'm going to sing with my family, I just got to take authority in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Praise God. I don't know what to do. I know we're about done, but I just want to sing a little bit of my song, all right? Need a bass player. Brother Ray, Brother David, one of y'all help me out. It's easy. Uh, we've got to stand against the devil. Never turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated through Christ. The battle is won. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Hold to his nail scarred hand. And when the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. We've got to stand against the devil. Never turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated through Christ. The battle is won. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Hold to his nail-scarred hand. 
When the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. The Philistines came out against Shema to take away his piece of ground. The people all began to run. They were afraid of those around. Well, but Shema put up a mighty good fight. He said, boys, I'll never back down. In the battle, we too must stand our ground. We're going to stand against the devil. Never turn our backs and run. Oh, the enemy is defeated through Christ. The battle is won. Let us lift our eyes on Jesus. Hold to his nail scarred hand. When the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. I like this verse. It's just my time for the angel to find old Satan up. Cast him into the lake of fire so far down, he'll never get up. Then the saints will be rejoicing. What a time we're going to have. We're going to fight another battle, for the enemy will not be around. We've got to stand against the devil. You ready to stand? Well, the enemy is defeated. Christ, the battle is won. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Hold to his nail scarred hand. When the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. We've got to stand against the devil. Never turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated. Yes! You may shoot me, but it won't be in the back, devil. Oh, when, when the battle, battle is over, over we'll be living in the promised land. land. One more time. It's just about time for the angel to find the devil up. We'll cast him into the lake of fire. So far down, he'll never come up. Then the saints will be rejoicing. What a time we're going to have. Never to fight another battle For the enemy will not be around Well, I'm gonna stand against the devil Never turn our back and run The enemy is defeated Through Christ the battle is won Let us keep our eyes on Jesus Hold to his nails When the battle is over Come on, sing that chorus with me. We've got to stand again. Come on, fellowship. Turn our backs and run. The enemy is defeated. How? Through Christ, the battle is won. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Hold to his nail scarred hand. When the battle is over, we'll be living in the promised land. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you praise Him? Would you praise Him? Would you praise Him? I pray it said something to cause you to stand this morning. Brother Sam preached on lingering with those that lack. I'm preaching about standing. For those that don't lack. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning all over the house? Amen. Appreciate the great preaching. Glory to God. Amen. I promise you, if the rock and rollers and the Amen. Just, I don't know if you've seen that blue building. Just, I mean, how far is that blue building from here? Maybe, right up down there. Some of the most famous country and western singers sing right there. Conway Twitty, son, grandson, just sung there last week while we were in Kentucky. Praise God. I didn't miss him. Praise God. Amen. You know, when they go over, 
Nobody says nothing because they more time most time they looped anyway. So Amen. If we get intoxicated enough with the spirit, we wouldn't worry so much about time either, would we? But because we're human and y'all's bellies are growling, amen. And we gotta get back here for six o'clock. Youth service, Brother JJ. What's Brother JJ's last name? He'll be preaching about ten minutes before Brother Ten or minutes or so before Brother uh, Brother Weathers. And maybe some of the Maxons will be here. They, their boys will be testifying. So we're not starting new service late tonight. We're starting right at 6 o'clock. Amen. And uh, we appreciate 7.30, Brother David Webb. Amen. Be, come over and eat with us next door. There's plenty to eat, brisket. And uh, there's some uh, fried uh, chicken nuggets and stuff for the kids. If you, Amen. And uh, so uh, we appreciate you so much. You enjoyed the preaching this morning? Praise God. You know, I don't mind a shouting service when it breaks out shouting like last night, as long as folks get with it with the preaching. If folks only can shout and can't shout with the preaching, then that kind of bothers me. Amen. We appreciate you helping the preachers this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Over the food. Glory to God.